Hey guys, this is Nick with the Elite Reef, and in today's video we're going to be covering a much anticipated topic, the equipment that keeps this reef tank thriving. So before we get into the equipment that keeps this reef tank thriving, I first want to say there is no skimmer, there is no sump, and there is no chemical filtration. The only sort of filter I have on this aquarium, so to speak, is two filter socks on either side of the tank. Now, how do I do and maintain this aquarium with no sump, skimmer, or any sort of chemical filtration? Let's jump into that. First, the best thing you can do is limit your feeding. Most people with reef tanks tend to really overfeed. The best way I've found to not overfeed is get one of these little droppers, fill it with your fish food, and only feed what the fish can eat. I only have three fish in this system, so there isn't a heavy bio load, but still I use this method to cut down on feeding and limit waste. Now inevitably there's always going to be waste in a reef aquarium, but one of the ways I have found to combat that issue is through the use of a large size cleanup crew. In my 80 gallon aquarium I have roughly 40 hermit crabs and 40 snails of differing types, and that's my recommendation. I think for every one gallon of aquarium water you have in your tank, you should have one member of a cleanup crew. I also like to split it 50-50. So if you've got a 100 gallon aquarium, you should have 100 members of a cleanup crew, 50 different snails, 50 different hermit crabs. That's gonna give you a nice balanced approach for your reef tank. And don't skimp on a cleanup crew. I see so many people who get into the hobby and they don't buy it because it's not exciting. They wanna get the corals, the fish, but start off with a really healthy sized cleanup crew and I guarantee you it's gonna help you be a lot more successful going forward in this hobby. So moving on to the equipment, as you can see if you've been following my other videos, I have a totally new lighting system. I got rid of the T5 light and I have just Kessel lights. I have two A160s on the outside and an A150 in the middle. I, I really like these lights. I think Kessel does a great job. They're a totally unique LED blend. I wanted to see what they would do. You know, I've, uh, it's, it's kind of the fun thing about the hobby is you can try different things, you can experiment. I had tremendous growth and success with the T5. If it doesn't work, I can easily go back to that. I'm keeping that fixture. But for now, I really want to see how these lights do. And because of their brilliant color and their shimmer, I'm going to give them a shot. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, I don't have a sump. All of my filtration is in the back of the aquarium. Water flows in from either side into a filter sock. Then that water flows into a chamber where I have my heater. And I do have a pump attached to a dual media reactor in case anything went crazy. I can turn that on and combat any issue if something were to happen with the aquarium, I have it just in case. Now on the far side, you can see that there is a skimmer there. However, it's just like the dual media reactor. It's only turned on in case of an emergency. I can easily have that, it's ready to go. In the middle back chamber is where the two return pumps are. They're two Eheim 580 gallon per hour pumps and they do a really nice job recirculating the water throughout the tank. Now under the aquarium, you can see there is no sump. It's very simple and basic. I've got a section for my auto top off a section for my battery backup and my controller and some outlets, and then a section for some testing equipment as well as two-part dosing chemicals. For the auto top-off, I use a high-door ATO, which I've had for about four and a half years. It's been extremely reliable and I haven't had a single problem with it. I use a 10-gallon aquarium for a reservoir for the RODI water, and this lasts me about five to six days without having to refill it. Perfect for when I'm on vacation or traveling for business. The middle compartment stores the life support for this reef. I've got a battery backup for my Ecotec MP40 in case there's a power outage. I also have a Apex Junior controller, as well as your basic multi-outlet surge protector that is really nice and convenient when I'm doing water changes and I need to easily turn on or off a certain pump or switch within the aquarium. The last compartment is pretty straightforward. It's just some basic storage for some testing equipment as well as to store my two-part dosing solution. I still dose manually. I am looking at getting an automatic doser, so hopefully there'll be a new video for that in the coming weeks. My last piece of advice is to do heavy water changes. I do a 15% religiously every week. It really helps keep this reef tank thriving. Thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you click that subscribe button. Comment in the section below, and we'll see you next time.